So hello everybody, Elizabeth Connell Barr here from Live Blood Online. And I'm here with Dr. Ocker, our tutor on the Live Blood Analysis training course. And uh, Dr. Ocker is going to be answering some of the most common questions we get asked by our students and also about people inquiring about the training course about choosing the right microscope for live blood analysis. So um, hello, Dr. Ocker. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Um, I wonder if you could just explain the importance of buying the right microscope for live blood analysis. Well, it, it, it really is extremely important to be quite careful when cho choosing a microscope for live blood analysis. The reason for that is that it is not just a standard type of microscope being used for the analysis. Uh, in terms of what we aim to actually find in blood samples, uh, most of the more important and, and really interesting anomalies are actually seen in dark field. Uh, and for dark field, uh, the microscope does have, need to have a very specific set of, of, of specifications, um, some really uh, unique features that are not commonly found in normal laboratory microscopes, uh, and a few additional features that we've built into our own microscopes just to, to make it, it more convenient and you know, allow you to see everything that you should be able to see uh, in, in blood samples. Uh, so it is it is quite a specialized tool and and certainly not uh, the sort of standard microscopes that you would be able to find online uh, and even uh, even microscopes being sold as dark field microscopes and even microscopes advertised online as as dark field live blood analysis microscopes uh, we come across this this quite often in the course uh, with attendees sending us uh, you know, information on these microscopes and asking us if they are uh, appropriate for blood analysis. And usually when you actually look at the features, it's, it's quite obvious right away that you can see that the microscope is not suitable at all for, for live blood analysis. You know, it might be okay for, for viewing other samples in dark field, uh, but as I said, there's the set of requirements. Uh, there's, there's really a very unique set of requirements and very difficult to find that in, uh, in normal commercial microscopes because it is such a niche uh, type of technology that we work with. Uh, so I can run through some of the important points and uh, I think it would be important to discuss uh, in terms of the actual specifics. Uh, you know, one of the first things to, to actually check is the strength of the light source. Um, you know, that immediately separates the, the microscopes that could be eligible for blood analysis from those that are completely not, not suitable. Uh, and you would find, uh, often shockingly so, that the microscopes advertised as dark field live blood analysis microscopes have a very weak light source. Um, you know, something that you would only use for normal laboratory work. Uh, and certainly not for, for viewing live samples in dark field. So the minimum strength that the light source needs to be is actually 50 watts halogen or, or the equivalent in LED. So our uh, top of the range microscopes used for, for blood analysis actually have a nine watt LED light source, which is equivalent uh, to a hundred watt halogen. So, uh, you know, very high level of brightness, which actually allows for the type of contrast uh, that we need in dark field. Uh, without that, without a suitable light source, the microscope is, is simply not going to be suitable. There's not enough brightness uh, to allow the, the small, finer structures that we're actually looking for in dark field to actually show up between the blood cells. You may be able to see some of the blood cells clearly, and um, you, may, you might be able to see some of the white blood cells, but the actual structures between the cells um, that we're specifically looking for in dark field are, are simply not visible. If you can't see them, you, you really never know when they are there and when they're not there. So it becomes a, a real challenge when working with clients to try and work out what you're actually seeing if the microscope doesn't allow you to see what you should, what you should be able to see. Um, the, the, the second setting that we always uh, look at as well, uh, other than the light sources, to look at the magnification levels. Uh, other than the type of optics, just simply the magnification levels is, is really quite important. The, the reason for that is that your conventional build or type of setup with a microscope 
uh, provides the same level of magnification on your viewing screen as what you get through the eyepieces. Now, it's, it's, it's quite logical why this would be the case, and it, it, it would be ideal in most other situations. But in live blood analysis, we actually need a fairly high level of magnification on the screen uh, to be able to properly see the shape of the blood cells. So the actual anomalies related to the shape of the red blood cells themselves uh, are only really visible at high magnifications. We're talking about magnifications from about a thousand times up. Now, most of your normal microscopes with the, the type of setup where you have this, the same magnification on the viewing screen, when you're using the 40 times objective, uh, all that you're able to achieve then on the viewing screen is a magnification of 400 times. So to achieve a, a magnification of a thousand times, you actually need to use the 100 times objective uh, which is also not really very easy to work with. And often because of these microscopes just being standard laboratory microscopes, they also don't have the correct 100 times objective, uh, which means that in most cases where these microscopes attendees end up using the 40 times objective because they, they can't get a good enough image with a 100 times objective, and then have a dismally low level of magnification on the screen. And they're really struggling to see, you know, um, you, you could zoom in digitally to increase the magnification but you know there's only so much that you're able to see in terms of detail when when viewing or zooming into a digital image so it becomes quite a challenge um, now with our microscopes with a 40 times objective the there's additional magnification going to the viewing screen so this means that using the 40 times objective you actually get a magnification of a thousand six hundred times uh, on the viewing screen, which is really ideal for identifying anomalies in, in live blood. Uh, and this also then allows for even higher magnification. So using the 100 times objective, then uh, we're able to get a magnification of 4,000 times on the screen, uh, which is sort of what we have in the example behind me. Um, that's a, a dark filled image viewed with the 100 times objective and we're getting a, a, about a, a 4,000 times magnification on the screen, um, which is really ideal, you know, when we have very small structures like microbes that we're looking at and we want to actually look at the actual shape. Um, this is really, uh, you know, wonderful to, to have access to. So um, students are not going to know until it's too late um, that they're not going to be able to see all of the anomalies. Um, and I suppose that the companies that are selling the, these microscopes online that say they're for live blood analysis, they're not actually um, um, being, um, what can I say, they're not actually lying. They actually don't know the specifications of live blood analysis because it's it's not very well known, is it? No, you know, it's, it's becoming more well known these days, but uh, it's still really uh, not widely known and, and certainly the actual specifics required, you know, in the microscopes uh, are also not known. Uh, so these mi microscope companies are, you know, just companies selling microscopes, they're not involved at all with, with live blood analysis, so they're simply not aware of what's required. Um, you know, to see anything uh, in, a, in a live blood sample. Um, and, you know, they, they're simply pro providing a, a basic microscope that allows for dark field, um, but certainly not the type of, of, of detail that we're actually looking for in blood samples. And as you said, yes, you know, attendees think they're, they're buying a suitable microscope and only discover when they, when they start looking at blood samples that what they're seeing on their system doesn't really compare uh, to what we have in, in, the, in the training course. And, you know, that, that becomes really difficult then to actually start practicing with something like that. Thank you. And um, students often ask if they can buy a cheaper microscope um, that they see available online. So what do you, well, you've probably almost answered that, but um, what advice would you give? Yeah, it, it really is extremely difficult using a, a, a microscope that doesn't have the correct specifications. You're able to see some of the anomalies, uh, for example, in Brightfield, you may be able to see some of the anomalies, 
but anything at a high level of magnification um, or anything in dark field, you're really not able to see. And uh, it becomes difficult, you know, one to actually learn uh, uh, the, the, the anomalies and how to identify them, but also, you know, practically using it in practice is, is, is extremely difficult because you're missing, uh, you know, a lot of information in, in clients and certainly not providing a, a proper live blood analysis type of assessment for your clients. Uh, and it becomes difficult because practitioners don't really know, uh, you know, what the, all the technical terms mean in, in microscopes and, you know, what the what a condenser is and an objective and those sort of things. And we provide uh, information on, on the type of specifications to look for. Uh, but often also a very good suggestion is actually just to ask for an example of a live blood sample in dark field, if these microscopes are in fact suitable for, for analyzing live samples in, in dark field, then there definitely would be an, a sample image uh, that the company would be able to share with you. And, uh, you know, simply looking at that, um, you know, and comparing it to the images that we have in the training course, um, it would be quite obvious whether the microscope is suitable for uh, dark field analysis or not. Okay, thank you. And um, we do get attendees uh, that join us um, that do actually um, buy an inferior microscope online, uh, many of them from China. Um, so what advice would you give them? Well, the, the, the best solution really is just to try and, and, and sell the microscope um, and, and try and get a microscope that is actually suitable for uh, live blood analysis. Um, the, you know, it, it is possible to try and make some changes if you if you're quite technically capable, uh, you might be able to, you know, install some type of, of, of alternative light source, uh, you might be able to find some sort of way to work around some of the specifications. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it, it, it's, it's sort of a, a lot of downstream effects, you know, if you don't have a suitable system, there are other things that are also not suitable. So what we often find uh, with especially these microscopes manufactured in China is just, you know, the quality of the components, uh, you know, it might look like a good microscope and it, it might even perform like a good microscope for a while, but often we find that the actual components within the microscope, um, you know, quite, quite critical components that are, you know, involved with the mechanism of, of focusing, which is something that, you know, use on a, on a regular daily basis, uh, are produced from inferior uh, materials, um, uh, you know, uh, inferior types of metals, um, which really shouldn't be used for gear mechanisms. So our microscopes are uh, manufactured in Japan and from hard wearing uh, materials, the, the actual mechanisms in the focusing uh, system is actually, are, are manufactured actually from brass. Uh, so, you know, lifespan as well uh, is also important then to consider uh, how long the microscope is going to last. Uh, we have a, a two-year warranty with our microscopes um, because they are so robust that we don't really have any, any long-term issues with them. Uh, and they're actually built to perform in a busy um, type of practice situation because practitioners do, you know, once you learn how, how beneficial live blood analysis is for you, you use it on, on every single client that comes in. And it becomes something that one relies on. So it really is important to ensure that you get something that is you know, reliable. Okay, well, thank you very much for that. Um, so I hope that's been useful to you. Um, do let us know if you need help choosing your microscope. Um, you'll find our email address and our website below. Um, and thank you very much for joining us. And thank you very much, Dr. Ocker. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.